Just keep spinning, just keep spinning. And it's my backside. My backside. My backside does not belong to me. When I was lying in bed two nights ago now, so Friday night, I fell down the rabbit hole of watching other YouTubers complete their virtual Everesting challenge attempt. And the ones that completed it all had one thing in common. They were all very experienced cycling athletes. I'm neither. What I know about cycling, you can put on the back of a postage stamp and I'm definitely not an athlete. However, sometimes ignorance is bliss. The Everesting, 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 Everest in. However you say it, V Everesting is one of the most requested Zwift related challenges I get suggested to do in my video comments. V Everesting or virtual Everesting, Everesting, it doesn't sound right. For those that don't know, is an attempt to climb the height of Everest, which is 8,849 meters on an indoor trainer like my Watt bike. So I decided to see what all the fuss was about. How hard can virtual Everesting actually be? It's really hard to say, so if I can't say it, I'm sure it's gonna be hard to do it. <laughs> Good morning guys, um, today is Saturday morning. Um, what time is it? It is half seven Saturday morning, so not particularly early. I'm about to do, that's relevant, because I'm about to do something ridiculous. It came over me last night when I was lying in bed, I was watching a few videos, I've been watching, I've been looking at this for a long time, but I've just been putting it off. I'm gonna attempt to Everest on Zwift. It's called Virtual Everesting. I'm stood in my bedroom, I've just put my bib shorts on. That's what today's video is. This is gonna be the hardest thing I've ever done on Zwift. Let's do this. The way I see it, if I don't try, I'll never know. If I succeed, then I have overcome a really hard challenge. If I fail, I've learned more from that foul than I would have known before attempting it. I had a weigh in a few days before attempting this. I now weigh 95.5 kgs, and if I'm completely honest, probably a little bit lighter, but in my efforts to get on the bike before I changed my mind, I didn't weigh myself that morning, yesterday morning. So I'll take 95.5 kgs for my first attempt. Now I know there are really strict rules for V Everesting and I think I'm within these rules, but if I'm not, I'm really not that bothered as this is a personal experiment and not a record breaking attempt. I'm not sending this to any websites. Thing is, I don't even know why I'm doing this. So today, I was supposed to be going out in a real world bike ride. My daughter wants to come with me and she's got to go to work <laughs> with my missus. I've got a family business. However, I've got the day off and I need to get on the bike. Let me get on the bike and I'll talk to you. Okay, right, I need to find the, I don't know, Road to Sky, just ride. Is it here? There it is, Road to Sky. Start ride, quicker I can start this, the quicker I can get to the bottom. Let me zoom in a bit, there we go. Okay, I'm just gonna talk a little bit around why I've done this. I've been looking at this for a while and I've been putting it off. The reason for it, I don't know why I'm grinding this early, I've just started and I'm grinding. The reason for it is it's a challenge that I don't think I can do. That's how I see this. Because it's a challenge I don't think I can complete, I've been scared of attempting it. However, I'm the lightest I've ever been. I'm the fittest I've ever been. I've got bundles of endurance, so I'm gonna try. I'm gonna give it a go. So my PB up the Alp, with me absolutely going for it, was 80 minutes, pretty much dead on. 80 minutes and 33 seconds. There's no way attempt one, attempt two, there's no way attempt eight is gonna be 80 minutes. So let's assume I'm gonna be doing two hours per climb, per Alp. At 16 hours, strategy for today, I'm gonna to take the first three attempts easy. I'm probably gonna do under 200 watts for the climb and then see how I feel. And on the descent, where the bike is just rolling downhill, I'm gonna get off the bike and eat something. Get back on the bike, go again. Get off the bike, 
eat something after, on, on the descent, not mid-climb. Um, I've got water, so I've got my plain water, and then I've got electrolytes. Unlike doing an in real life version, I can go and get bananas and bread and carbs and gels if I need to, they're downstairs. Okay, right, we've gone through the banner. And I'm just gonna take, we're about to cross the start of the Alp de Zwift segment. Let me turn this off. Yeah, so the last time I did this was in a race. It was in a race that I'd set up. My epic race video. Go and watch it if you haven't seen it already. Really good video. And uh, I'm not sure whether my ghost here that's about to start, let him go. See you later. Get him go. This was my 80 minute PR ghost and I had absolutely no intention of trying to beat it. If I did try to beat it on this first attempt, then this Everesting challenge would be over on climb one. So this is it. This is attempt one. I'm putting the fan back on because I am melting. I want to get better and stronger on Zwift. Several years ago when I weighed a lot more than I do now, a lot more than I do now, I wanted to start running but I couldn't because I weighed too much and it hurt to run. It, it was exhausting. I signed up for an ultra marathon and I walked 62 miles nearly killing myself in the process. I'm simplifying this process as the, this statement doesn't really include the thousands of miles I walked in training for this event. This ultra event back in 2019 single-handedly got me into the world of fitness, living a healthier lifestyle and wanting to be a much, much better, lighter, healthier version of me. That event was probably one of the most important achievements I have ever achieved. This gave me the strength of knowledge to know that nothing I ever try to do will ever be as hard or as bad as this first attempt to walk 62 miles. It was awful. I completed this walk and I never want to have to endure that level of discomfort ever again. And I know I won't have to if I keep pushing myself to get fitter and, in the process, lighter. Trying to Everest on Zwift will give me the knowledge to know where my limits are currently and then it will motivate me to want to try and break through those limits in the future. This is why I do challenges like this, for the motivation. Feeling as bad as I did on the ultra marathon back in 2019, it gave me the kickstart I needed and it was the reason I started this YouTube channel documenting my fitness journey. The ultra marathon was race to the stones by the way. Slow and steady wins the race. Right, I'm not gonna record the whole thing because that would be as much of an endurance event for you as it is for me. So luckily for you, you get to watch this suffer fest in short snippets. So, see you shortly. I'll see you probably in about an hour. So I've made a mistake. I've just realized 48 minutes into this uh, mental climb that I'm still wet riding a racing bike. I haven't changed my bike. So I'm just thinking, do I stop now? Yeah, I'm gonna change it. Garage, uh, bike, I bought a new bike. Hang on, no, hang on, I've already bought it. Frame, I don't know, this one says it's, this one says it's the best, I'm gonna try this one. So I'm gonna put that on. Uh, Zwift Insider says it's the best climbing bike in game, so I'm going to do that. And then the lightweight Millenstein, which are the best wheels. All right, fans, going back on, I am absolutely melting. I need to make sure that I keep drinking. I've also got my electrolytes. There's nothing I can do about being fast. I'm still too heavy. But. I can just keep spinning. Just keep spinning and try and keep my heart rate in a zone two, you know, sort of level. Yeah. Coming up to corner 11 on my first attempt. Three seconds. Three, two, one. And I've just hit my PR, 90 day PR from a couple of weeks ago when I did that epic race up out to Zwift with 240 plus other people. And I am still, how far? I'm still just under 4K away from the top. 
I'm just coming up to corner six. But heat wise, yeah, I'm warm. I'm just getting out the saddle. I'm also watching Doctor Who, which is that sad music in the background. It's a particularly sad part of Doctor Who. I'm not just really melancholy while riding up the aisle, feeling really sad for myself. Just giving my backside a break. We're just approaching the finish line and we are massively behind, obviously my PR, but ahead of schedule. So I plan 120 minutes for the climb. Well, that's what I wanted anyway. And I really, really need to go to the toilet. Okay, good, right, how'd you turn around on the bike? I don't know how to turn around. And all I'm doing, U-turn. There we go. All right, let's turn that off. Let's start heading back down. And then I can go to the toilet. I am desperate for the toilet. I need to refill my water bottles. All right, unclip. Right, shoes are off. Okay, good. Right, see you in a second. I need to go to the toilet really badly. So really quickly, I just wanna thank you for watching my videos. I'm about to cross the 4,000 subscriber mark and that blows my mind that like-minded individuals like you enjoy watching me attempt hard challenges like this. I do have a Patreon page that I've set up for those of you that would like to support me. In return, for your kind support, I post early access videos, exclusive content, and I'll be holding Q&A sessions in the not too distant future. I also upload weekly Zwift race videos in their entirety without edits or commentary. The link to my Patreon page is in my description. Okay, I'm gonna use the GoPro. I've got my electrolyte set up, uh, I've got my water, I'm just eating. I'm just eating bread. Um, I've got lunch planned. I just need some carbs. I've got like four minutes until I need to get back on the bike. So I'm gonna eat this. I feel all right. Um, famous last words. I've only done it once. Seven and a half more times to go. I'm just gonna get the next one done. I'm just gonna do it one at a time. Now I'm ready. Right, let's go. We're just about to cross the banner. I need to be really careful that I don't take too long with um, doing this when I have my breaks in between. Because I only just got back in time to spin it back around. Otherwise I'm gonna have to ride an extra, you know, <laughs> four, five, six hundred meters by the time the bike stops. I have got Coffee. Oh, I've left my coffee over there. Let's try that again. Let me just catch up my ghost. Very civilized, this uh, Swifting. Climbing a mountain on a bike, drinking coffee. I can live with that. Found myself some kind of sugary biscuits in the cupboard. I thought I'd try and give myself a bit of a sugar boost. Just turn the fan off, so I'm risking overheating. Uh, heart rate's a little high, I'm in zone three. Um, I wanna get back down to zone two. However, yeah, first corner's always the worst one. This corner 21. I absolutely hate it, psychologically for some reason. It's a long segment from the start and it feels like the worst bit. My legs actually feel, I mean, <laughs> I'm at the first corner of the second attempt, but my legs feel okay. I'm ahead of my first, of my first run. I am I don't know, over 10 seconds ahead. Yeah, so far so good. But that first corner, that's a doozy. It's done. I'm happy with that. All right, let's keep going. I'm just gonna 
enjoy this. And put the fan back on. I really started to overheat without the fan on me full blast. It had to be on absolute maximum. And when I started to overheat, I obviously started to struggle. This was probably my biggest challenge throughout this whole challenge, overheating, which can lead to exhaustion and severe dehydration. This I needed to avoid at all costs. And it probably didn't help that I chose to do this challenge on a day where it was 25 degrees outside. Why I'm not outside running or cycling in the sun is beyond me. Feel free to slate me in the comments. I should really be outside. <laughs> I'm starting to get worried. I keep getting a connection failure. Uh, it's my headphones has come back. This connection failure really worried me at the time as I was now three hours into this challenge and I really, really didn't want to have to start again because my Wi-Fi or Bluetooth fouled on me due to a technical glitch. I don't mind failure due to, well I do mind, but I don't mind failure for the sake of this video due to physical exhaustion, but failure due to equipment not working properly is really frustrating. I now know that this error message was due to my heart rate monitor battery being low. I quickly charged it in a break, but that didn't stop me worrying about it mid climb. Yeah, it's happened again. Uh, I can't, I can't risk losing this connection and having to do this again. I've got to undo my shoe velcro. My little toe's starting to go numb. Just trying really hard to shoot different muscles and give my backside a break. Because I think that's what's going to go first is my backside. Okay. Right. Let's turn, let's turn that off. Right, let's turn around. Uh, where's the mouse? You turn. Right, let's go back down. That's climb number two done. Just six and a half more to go. <laughs> this is break. Number two, so I've just done the second climb. I'm about to go back up and start the third one. But before I do, I'm gonna finish eating this and I'm just gonna lie on the floor here for a brief minute. I just wanna lie, I just wanna lie flat. my bread I'm back to get on back on the bike one thing I have done I've brought a fan to blow me I've also got my vac master which blows me in my face and my torso but my legs are getting really hot so I've got this blown on my legs okay I'm back I've got more food good timing because I'm about to do a u-turn I'm about to do a u-turn now oh hang on and you u-turn there we go Right, let's get back on the bike. Great, I've started it. I didn't mean to do that. I had accidentally triggered the PR ghost for my last climb. I've got my feet out of the shoes. So he's getting back in. This false start triggering my ghost had a bit of a psychological effect on me. Basically having my ghost leave me before I even start and get ahead really annoyed me for the next 120 minutes. Okay, right. Oh, my ghost is well gone. I've kicked my ghost off before I've, oh, it's really annoying that I've done that then. And we're off. I will also add that things down below. Oh, my pants. Okay, and we're off again. We're starting to become really annoying as well. A little bit of chafing from the copious amounts of sweat and a lot of things, a lot of things being crushed. Climb number three. Let's do this. Good news is I have coffee. I'm also in the wrong gear. Let's keep going. The ghost is gonna be putting me off now the whole way because it started off without me. I took my t-shirt off to go to the toilet and I've also put it on inside out. So, 
Oh man, I have an inside out t-shirt on. Right, I need to get this fan on. At this point, my legs, my back, my feet, etc., were okay. I wasn't feeling too much discomfort from a fitness perspective, but my comfort level in the nether regions was taking a really big hit. We're killing it so far. So far, so good. But this is corner 21, the worst corner on Alpha Swift. Psychologically, for no reason other than I don't like it. Once I'm over this, I already feel better. Just keep spinning, just keep spinning. I've had a drama. I've just spilt the entire contents of my electrolyte bottle. It fouled on me when I squeezed it. I need to fix it, because that will go in the carpet. And V Everesting is not worth me having a stain on my carpet. Bloody hell. I've got it all down the fan as well. The old crown jewels don't belong to me anymore. Okay. I am, I haven't pressed record on the screen. I'm gonna zoom this in a bit. I am struggling. Okay, I'm struggling to get my feet in. Right, I'm coming, let's keep going. Right, five hours and 14 minutes so far. And then it was at this point that the wheel started to fall off for me psychologically. I'm currently halfway up climb three and my backside and crown jewels were hurting from the constant pressure and movement. I have chafing and things are starting to feel all Pink Floyd, uncomfortably numb. I'm also starting to get thoughts of self-doubt. I hate it when thoughts like this start to enter my head as it's hard to shake them off when things feel this bad. One of my superpowers is my self-belief, but that was even starting to waver. Things are not looking good, guys. I am 61.3 kilometers into this ride, uh, 2,696 meters. I think Everest is, what is it? What is Everest? Yeah, so Everest is 8,848. Let me just get to this finish line. 160 meters. Um, I'm feeling it now. This is three times up the Alp. I'm properly feeling it now. I'm absolutely boiling. Uh, I've got two fans on me. This is uh, just under two hours to do this. Okay, let's spin around. And I'm over. Right, you turn. I'm gonna go and get a drink, go to the toilet, fill up my water bottles, try and eat something. I'm not hungry at all now. That's what I'm gonna do now. So this start back down. My feet, the soles of my feet are burning. That's what I'm struggling with. I'm not, it's not so much the exhaustion, right? I'm feeling it, I'm feeling tired. It's the soles of my feet feel like I've been walking on lava. They're absolutely rocking and rolling. My toes, my little toes are numb. Um, and I, I don't think it's the shoes. I mean, you know, I don't, if I was wearing slippers, I don't think this would uh, make any difference. And then obviously make it harder to pedal. Um, and it's been my backside, my backside. My backside does not belong to me. I've been trying to stand more than I probably should for my heart rate and my endurance, I've been standing on the pedals as much as I can. Oh. 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 I've just put my, <laughs> I've just put my head under the tap to cool down and I'm gonna eat some pasta that's in the fridge from last night. Plain pasta. I need to put sauce on this. I can't find any sauce. <laughs> I'm just gonna put some hot sauce. It works the same as flame socks. Okay, right, I'm back. I'm moving a lot less comfortably than I was three climbs ago. Right, this is climb number four. Get on the bike, put the shoes back on. 
Right. I'm not bothering to do them up. Ah. Uh, the old bot is done for. Right. That's corner 21 complete. And Ghost is off. Not gonna lie, I'm struggling. I've got the thoughts of quitting entering my head. And my legs are on fire, but more than that, worse than my legs is my backside. There's Maddie, guys. Maddie's popped in, give a wave. Then, as my whole family returned from a full so day's work. Hang on, let me hit record so people can see on screen where I am. This gave me a big boost in motivation to have Maddie and then Scarlett join me in the office to cheer me on really helped. Right, do you want to save the camera? Back. Oh no, hang on, hold that. Hang on, I've got to catch my avatar. You've got to catch his avatar? Yeah. Do you, do you want to say where I am and how well I'm doing and what times are? And... Um, where are you? You've done 3,459 metres yeah. in 6 hours, 51 minutes and 43 seconds. Yeah, and I've covered 82.4 kilometres. And you're coming up to corner 14. And what's my avatar doing? You've got a little burst of energy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah last, last time up I was feeling good at this point. It's flying. You gotta catch him. I knew I couldn't quit this climb. I had to at least get to the top of number four, and then I had the opportunity to see how I felt. How are you feeling? I feel terrible. <laughs> I feel absolutely awful. I've decided I'm gonna call it. Loser! You can't quit! You can't say that. You can't quit! They heard you. You got to see their lights. Like, make me feel good. Mad. I am dying. <laughs> you can't quit. Everest is really high. Do you know how high Everest is? No. Google it. I just Googled it. 8,849. I have no concept. Meters. That's really high. Why are you hiding? I've got both my girls in here as a support crew. Give a wave. Give a wave, Scarly. Scarly doesn't feel very well today. She's got a little tickle. She's got a little tickle. A little tickle in the back She's of her throat. Tickle. Little sore throat, a little cough, a little cold. So we've just gone through corner five and we're just, well, we're, we're just over 50 meters from 4,000 meters and I'm dying. I am literally dying. How's it looking, Scarly? How's it, look, how's it looking, Mad? Good. Okay, that's my support crew for you. I'm calling it a half Everest if I can, if I can even get there. I am burning out. I don't even know why I'm doing this. I only did this as a... Saturday morning. Yeah. How hard could it be, I thought. Turns out really Seven hard. Seven hours and 46 minutes later. Yeah. How hard could it be? It's pretty hard, isn't it? I'm grinding. I am grinding. Corner two. Oh my God. What's going on around here? My backside and things of things are done it's really hard this is really hard four times up the alp yeah that'll do me i don't think i'll be trying this anytime soon give it to next week let's try again <laughs> the thing is that's not even a joke <laughs> oh i just want this all deal to end uh-oh Oh my God. Why did you stop? I then. Connection dropped out. My bike lost connection. Oh, I panicked then. I thought, no way, I couldn't. I couldn't not finish. At least. I'm not finishing. Well, all right. You know what I say that on camera? I couldn't not finish this climb. That's what I meant. Right, oh, we're nearly at the top. I can see it. I can see the top, 260 metres, oh, I'm over the top, really fast now, okay let's finish it and start shall we? I 
that's all I've got. Oh. And hang on. U turn. Oh. Back down. No, I'm done. I'm done. Back down. Oh, hi guys. Hi guys. Hi guys. Just out for a eight hour ride. As you do, 8 hours and 30 minutes, just a cheeky Sunday ride <laughs> up a mountain. Don't mind me. So that's it. I decided to call it there. This was just an experiment. I wanted to see where my threshold was when it came to doing a challenge like this on Zwift. I've never done something as long as this before on a bike. I will eventually return to this challenge 100% eventually. Today is the day after yesterday's attempt and I feel fine. My Garmin watch said that last night's sleep was poor and I had a, I had a huge amount of body stress, the same sort of fatigue sleep you get with a bad case of the flu, but I didn't really feel like it. I feel like I slept okay. After I got off the bike, I had a hot bath and I had something hot to eat and then I passed out in bed. I didn't get any cramp, which is a good sign. If I'm completely honest, I got my food intake completely wrong. There was nothing wrong with what I ate, I just didn't eat enough of it. I didn't have enough calories to replace the 4,500 calories I had burned up until this point. And that's where I hit the wall. I just needed to increase the volume of food I was eating and probably eat things at higher carb and calorific value. A meal replacement drink would have been good on hindsight. I got my electrolyte and water intake spot on. I wasn't dehydrated at all, even though I was sweating nonstop and I didn't cramp up, which is really important, which is always what happens if I don't drink enough electrolytes. I did overheat quite badly. It didn't help doing this indoors on a day that was 25 degrees outside. The next time I attempt this, I'll invest in another fan of some kind, probably don't do it on a really hot day, and I'll probably get another VacMaster fan, which is worth its weight in gold, the one I was using for this challenge in my face. I just have it behind me blowing at my legs and backside. Even though I didn't reach the end of this challenge, I really enjoyed attempting it. The next time I attempt it, I will 100% complete it as I know what to expect now in regards to the food prep, the discomfort, the sort of challenges I'll be facing. I will also strap a king size deluxe mattress to my backside for the whole ride. I am pretty sure that is allowed within the V Everesting rules. Everesting, Everesting. Anyway, for anyone about to jump into the comments, I know about the rules. I've read the website. Please spare me. This is just a big bloke trying something new to see what it was like. I wanted to see how hard it really was. I forgot to change my training difficulty and it remained on 60%, which is where I race on it all the time. I am annoyed I forgot to change my bike and wheels to a climbing bike and light wheels before the start of the first climb. It was a schoolboy error as when I eventually did change it, it felt like it made a huge difference. I timed the brakes in between the attempts really well, but the biggest hurdle will always be time on the bike. With me weighing in at 95.5 kgs and only outputting 150 to 200 watts across each climb, time on the bike would always have been in excess of 16 hours. And that's assuming I didn't fall off a cliff mentally and physically if I'd kept going, which inevitably I would have. And then it would have been into silly time on the bike. I need to lose more weight before I attempt this again. So having said all of that, how hard is V Everesting? Everesting, V Everesting, how hard is it? It turns out it's really bloody hard. It's a really, really hard challenge. I wanna thank you for watching this video. Thank you to those of you who are subscribers. If you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, well, thank you for watching this far. For the 45% of you who haven't yet hit subscribe, please consider doing so. I'd really appreciate that. See you in next week's video. It's gonna be a good one. Do you think I look like Bjorn Borg? Who's that? Tennis player. Oh. Google Bjorn Borg. Okay. That's the end of today's video. Well, it's the end of me climbing Alp de Zwift as many times as I can. It turns out four is my limit at the moment. <laughs> Do I look like him? Yeah. <laughs> He has no beard. He hasn't. Yeah, he's got a little. Really, you've got a ginger yeah. one. All right. I'll give you an extender if you can afford Yeah, I'll give you ten pounds. What if I do it again? Yeah. Ten quid. Yeah. I'll give you ten quid. Not to do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a minute. <laughs> My Everton attempt hasn't worked, but I'll be back, baby. Next week. Next week. No, I won't be. Monday morning. No, I'm probably walking like John Wayne tomorrow, and I'm about to tick over to level thirty-one. I've done a whole level. 
<laughs> I've just realised. I've done a whole level. I'm about to tick over. Oh, I've got to get 31 now. Oh. Oh, man. How far off am I? No, I haven't. Oh, look. I did it. I just ticked over to 31. I've done a whole level on one ride. 100, 100 kilometres. I've just unlocked 100 kilometres. Woohoo! Metric century kit. Well done. That's 100 kilometres in the bank. Downhill. Yeah, baby. That's it, guys. Four times up out to Zwift. How hard is Everest on... Sorry? How hard is it to Everest on Zwift? Answer? Uh, easy peasy. It turns out it's really, really hard. For you.